Hey, what's up everybody, Rich Gaming Guy here. So a couple weeks ago, I did a video talking about my experience on eBay as an eBay seller. I was listing retro gaming stuff for 99 cents starting bid in an auction style listing on eBay. And people were just bidding my stuff up to crazy price points, uh, prices that I knew they were never gonna pay. And then sure enough, payday came around and they ghosted me entirely. So I never got paid for that stuff, which was annoying. I knew that going in because they were just bidding just ridiculous prices that nobody would pay. But it wasted my time and it wasted other you know, legitimate bidders time as well. So I figured, and I said in that video, it's just people that are selling the same stuff, but maybe they're doing a buy it now option. And usually the auction is going to be the lesser price in the end. So that's usually the more attractive option. They're making it the less attractive option because people are looking at it and saying, all right, this is a five day auction on day two, it's at $250 for PS2 fat, for example. And now they go and they look at the buy it now options on there and they see that the same console you could get right then and there, buy it now for maybe 150, 175. So those buy it now options become the more attractive options for eBay uh, buyers and the live auction that has multiple days left, you know, nobody wants to deal with that because it's just priced out way too high and it makes no sense. You know, it's priced higher than the true value is. So it's a way that you can manipulate things to favor the buy it now retailers on eBay. So that was my logic. Uh, and when I posted that video, a lot of people agreed with me. It made total sense, but they actually shed light on something much more in depth than just that idea. And it could be a much larger scam or scheme than just that. So I'm gonna show you guys here in this video exactly what people were telling me. And I actually looked into it and it makes perfect sense. It's another way that people can manipulate the market and manipulate valuation to different items through eBay. So we're going to jump over to pricecharting.com. Pricecharting.com is a online database that basically gives you an average value for different items. And it's not just gaming, it's gaming, it's comic books, coins, um, collectible cards, all types of stuff. So we're going to jump over there. I'm going to just capture uh, my screen so you guys can see what I'm looking at as I go through all this. All right, so here we are on pricecharting.com. So let's say that we wanna look up the value of Mario Kart Double Dash for GameCube. We just type that in. And we have a couple different options here. We're gonna go with the regular one right here at the top. So here you can see a picture of the game and you're gonna see different conditions that it could be listed in. So loose would be just disc only. Complete is gonna be everything it would have come um, with new. So you're gonna get manual, case, uh, the game itself, but it's used, it's opened. So we have the price point there. This is the new price, graded price, price for just the box of the game, and then price for just the manual of the game. And each of these prices that you see here is the average. Now, if we scroll down, you can see we have a couple different tabs here and we have a tab for sold listings for each of these conditions. Now, this one here highlighted is the complete price. So CIB sold listings in each one of these, you'll see in parentheses, is from eBay. So 100% of the data on price charting is pulled from eBay. So it'll tell you the date it was sold, the listings title, and the sold price. Now, what it doesn't tell you is it doesn't confirm for you that these sales were actually uh, completed. It doesn't account for whether the buyers paid the sellers here. So for all we know, you know, these could be legitimate sales that are, you know, fully transparent and 100% real, or they could be just, you know, this one, went, this one right here that ends in 95 cents. Maybe this was a listing sold for that price, but the buyer never paid the seller. It still got documented, it still got added into this average, and it still contributed to the average value of this item. So there's no confirmation here. There's no, um, you know, just no way to verify anything on here. It's just simply pulling dates, uh, listing titles, and final sale prices. Nothing here is truly confirmed or verified in any way, shape, or form. So I always liked price charting uh, because it did give you a clear, you know, average value to things, but I never considered whether anything was fully verified and it's not fully verified in any way, shape or form. So it's a lot of smoke and mirrors and it's open for interpretation and it's unfortunately open to manipulation. So let's say we're going through here. I'm seeing a lot of pricing that is close together here, which is good. That's a good sign that does contribute to, 
you know, this being an accurate number. And I actually sold one of these to DK Oldies through eBay, believe it or not. I did a video on that whole experience. Um, and I sold for 76 bucks, which is exactly what the, uh, you know, average value is here. We have $72 plus $4 and change for shipping. So that comes out to exactly what I sold uh, my copy for. So everything here does look good, but let's say this one here, the 122, which is considerably higher than the true value here. Let's say that that one, it just, just for fun here, let's say that that one, the person never paid for, it still contributed to this price being brought higher. So let's say that I list one of these, for example, and we're going to do an extreme example just so we can see how easy it is to manipulate. Let's say I list one of these games. I have the same copy, again, uh, complete version of this. Everything's in good shape. I list it on eBay. Let's say that the same thing that's been happening to me in the past happens to me again. Let's say we have two bidders, both of which have no intention of ever paying for this item. Let's say that they bid against each other and they drive the price up to a ridiculous price where it's literally just them, the two of them bidding against each other to, for the sake of just bringing that price up to a higher number. Let's say that they bring it all the way up to 300 bucks. Crazy price, nobody's paying 300 bucks. In fact, 300 bucks would be high for this in sealed condition. So nobody else is competing with them. They're wondering what's wrong with these two idiots. Okay, these two guys bring the price up to say 300 bucks and then listing ends, they never pay, they ghost me. That price, that $300 price for this still gets pulled over to pricecharting.com. It still gets listed here with, with the date and everything, the date, the final price, and the title of my listing, but there's no way to verify that they didn't pay me in the end. So it still goes into the average here and in turn drives the average price of the value up. Um, and if we click on these, take a look at this. It won't show us any of the information. This is just, we found something similar because this is no longer, um, you know, current anymore. This listing ended. This ended yesterday. Today is the 11th. You see down here, it's 8.48 p.m. on the 11th of June. This ended yesterday. Unless you were the buyer or the seller, you cannot look at that listing anymore because it's not public information. So, again, no verification here. Um, nothing here can be actually confirmed other than there was a real listing. It ended on this day and this was the final price. Nowhere in here does it say that this buyer actually paid the seller. So it just leaves room for manipulation here. If you're somebody that is invested in the value of things going up, so say you're a retailer, and I'm not saying that anybody is actually doing this, I'm just saying that they could be doing this and it would be very easy to do this. Let's say you're a retailer, you sell retro gaming everything you would be benefiting directly from the value increasing on things because in turn you would make more money, you would make more profit. You could have people out there bidding things up purely to feed this whole price charting uh, valuation. Again, you could do the same thing that I just detailed for you on a broader scale. Let's say that there's five listings in a week on eBay for Mario Kart Double Dash in complete condition. Um, and you decide, I want to drive the price up of this title. All you do is you bid up all those listings to crazy prices. Let's say, again, extreme example, five listings in 10 days. We'll say 10 days instead of just a week. There's five listings for this particular title, complete condition on eBay in 10 days. And you want to manipulate the market. You want to drive the price up. You want to get the most value you can for this title because you want to sell your own copies of it. You go and you bid up all five of these auctions and you bring them all up to 300 bucks. Those five listings are going to get detailed in here with the dates that they sold for and that final price. So now you have five uh, $300 prices on here for this title. That's going to drastically increase this average here for the complete price point. So that's going to bring it up considerably. I'm, I'm not going to do the math here, but... If you had five $300 ones that are you know, more than three times higher than this, it is going to impact this significantly. And you could do this on a larger scale if you wanted to. So it's just you know, a, an intricate scheme or scam, however you want to put it. Um, and it could be happening. I'm not saying that it is everywhere, but it certainly could be happening. And it would be very easy to do so because price charting 
doesn't verify anything. And I'm not necessarily criticizing price charting because, you know, some stuff is private. You know, once a listing ends, that is now private between the buyer and the seller. If they don't choose to do business, that's their business to do that. That's their, you know, it's private to them. And I get all that, but then you can't take their information or you shouldn't be able to take their information, feed it into, you know, a system like this and up the valuation based on something that you can't confirm actually happened the way that it seems to have happened. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily to criticize price charting, but it's just to expose the fact that price manipulation happens, it can easily happen, and this is just another way as to how it can go about happening here. So let me know what you guys think of this. This wasn't, you know, something that I picked up on myself. A lot of people, again, wrote in on that first video that I did detailing my experience with eBay and shed light on this idea. And I think that it makes perfect sense. I really do. I think that um, you can see exactly how, you know, just looking at everything offered here on price charting, you can see exactly how easy it would be to manipulate things by simply doing that. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this. Is it as eye-opening for you guys as it is for me? Is it as concerning to you guys as it is for me as to how we come to these weird valuations on things without confirmation or verification of any kind? Let me know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed the video today, give me a thumbs up on the video. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.